The idea of someone or something watching you sleep is creepy as hell, unless you're Bella Swan from Twilight. But Google's latest effort in the health and wellness space does almost exactly that. The new Nest Hub has a built-in radar sensor that detects motion in your bed to determine if you've fallen asleep and then tracks the duration and quality of your slumber. It'll also see if you've coughed or snored and simultaneously monitor how bright or warm it is in your room. That's all in the name of helping you sleep better while avoiding the use of an actual camera, which is an intentional design choice meant to allay privacy concerns. For $99, the Nest Hub is already a compelling smart display that's cheaper than the original, with the sleep tracking being an added bonus. But based on my testing, I'm not sure I can count on it to improve my sleeping patterns just yet. First, the setup. You would think that you can just stick the Nest Hub on your bedside table for it to monitor your sleep, but it's a little trickier than that. The display needs to be set somewhere near your head at the same height as your mattress. If your bedside table is taller or shorter, you need to make some adjustments. I don't have a nightstand and the window ledge I was counting on using was too high up because I sleep on a pretty low platform bed. Plus, the Nest Hub has to be within arm's reach and facing your torso to sense your motion, so the desk that I had on the other side of my room wouldn't work either. I ended up using some boxes and books to create a makeshift podium for the display. Thankfully, finding a spot that would work was the only hiccup in an otherwise smooth setup process. I connected the Nest Hub to my home network via the home app, and in a few steps, I was done. I had to opt in to sleep sensing and agree to enable the microphone for detecting sounds like snoring and coughing. And then I went through a calibration process, which involved lying on top of the sheets and staying still for 10 seconds. Once I was done, a small bed icon appeared at the top right of the screen to indicate that sleep sensing was on. There was nothing left to do but go to sleep and wait for my results the next morning. Did it feel weird knowing my movements in bed would be logged by the Nest Hub? Yes. Did I get used to it over time? A little. Are the rewards worth the uneasiness? Well, that depends. Each morning, I eagerly looked at the Nest Hub's wellness panel to see how my night went. You can also get the results by asking assistant, how did I sleep last night? Google's reports focus on three aspects of your sleep, the duration, quality, and schedule, which refers to how well you stuck to a routine of going to bed and waking up at regular times. These are displayed as three circles that overlap almost like a Venn diagram, and your goal is to get them to perfectly overlap and become one. The more restful your sleep and the more closely you stick to your schedule, the more likely your circles will merge. Despite my occasional efforts to trick the Nest Hub, it was generally quite adept at recognizing when I'd fallen asleep. Even when I was on my side, facing away from the screen for a while, it didn't get fooled into believing that I had drifted off. And although I was still, for periods of time, lying awake, tormented by my busy brain, the Nest Hub didn't take that lack of movement to mean that I had passed out. For a sleep tracker that relies on motion sensing, this device is surprisingly accurate. But it did fall short on some fronts. In addition to detecting when you were asleep, the Nest Hub can, with your permission, use its mics, ambient light, and temperature sensors to give you more insight on what affects your rest. It'll also listen for sounds of you coughing and snoring and tell you your respiratory rate. I've never snored in my life. Weird flex, I know. So the Nest Hub not registering any snoring for me wasn't a surprise. But for my colleague, Matt Smith, who also has a review unit, Google noted 48 minutes of snoring one night. It also said that I'd coughed one morning after I woke up, although it didn't catch the one cough I faked the night before. I'm not sure what to do with the information about snoring or coughing, other than perhaps to run a humidifier if they're happening more than usual. I was hoping the Nest Hub could determine if leaving my TV or speakers on while I drifted off was helpful or harmful. But the light sensor didn't detect the glare coming from my TV, nor the brightening of my room as the sun rose. The only time it noted a change in light was when I shone my phone's flashlight directly at the screen. Google also doesn't point out sounds other than coughing and snoring, so I couldn't tell if having music on helped me fall asleep. 
But this is something Google should be able to add pretty easily through a software update if they can find a suitable privacy first way to do it. And though it didn't show me all the data that I was hoping for, the Nest Hub and the Fit Apps reports each morning were reassuringly anonymous. I'm not worried that someone's gonna see my results and get a too intimate look at my bedtime activities since it's just stuff like how long Google calculated I was asleep and whether I was restless. I've only had the Nest Hub for a few days, so it's hard to tell if Google's promise of proposing changes to my routines will help yet. The Nest Hub is a very different kind of sleep tracker than a wearable, which I find both uncomfortable and disruptive. While I prefer sleeping without something on my wrist, the data gleaned from a Fitbit is more useful for anyone interested in their physiological well-being. Google is simply telling you to get more sleep, get in bed earlier, and ultimately form habits that will help you rest better. You don't need a whole new display to tell you this. A Fitbit, however, can serve personalized information about what sleep zone you're in. That's actually more insightful, although it's a little harder to do anything about. The trouble is, sleep sensing is a free feature at the moment, while Google begins merging with Fitbit. The company hasn't shared any specifics yet, but it does seem like some sort of fee might be coming. At this point, I'm not sure if the Nest Hub offers enough to charge users for this feature, nor if it will ever be worth a separate subscription. If you wanted to ignore sleep sensing completely, you could, and you would find the Nest Hub is still a very capable smart display. It's basically the original home hub with better audio and some new features. For example, the Soli motion sensor isn't just for sleep tracking. It also recognizes when you wave your hand in the air and it can use that to dismiss a ringing timer. This worked well and although I find it easier to just say stop to silence an alarm, it is a useful option for those who can't or prefer not to speak. The new Nest Hub uses the same audio system as the Nest audio speaker and is a noticeable improvement over the original smart display. Music was louder, fuller, and clearer, although it didn't provide the same amount of bass as the Nest Audio. Also, thanks to a new onboard machine learning chip, Assistant is faster at responding to requests since it can process them locally instead of relying on a Wi-Fi connection. Besides these three changes, Google's latest connected screen offers pretty much the same features as its predecessor. Thanks to software updates over the years, the display now offers a visual interface and dashboards for smart home controls, communications, entertainment, and discovery. You can use the hub to make duo calls, play YouTube videos, or look for recipes. The assistant is also available for things like weather forecasts, setting timers, and streaming music. These things, and everything we've already liked about the original hub, continue to work well on the new version. Google also kept the same compact design and cute screen size, choosing to simply add a new color option for those looking for something fresh. If you like the unassuming look of the company's smart home devices, you'll appreciate the second gen Nest Hub's design. Ultimately, the new Nest Hub is an improved version of the original with one major new feature. While sleep sensing is technologically impressive and could be useful for some, its potentially upcoming fee would be really hard to swallow. For $99 though, the Nest Hub manages to outdo its predecessor at a significantly cheaper price, making it a great smart display. As long as you're not looking for a sophisticated sleep tracker, you'll find this an excellent addition to your home. For more reviews on fitness trackers, sleep sensors, and all kinds of devices from the world of consumer technology, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching. Thank you.